For your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hand Welcome to Church on the Waves. Glory to God. It's 6 p.m. West African time and 1700 hours GMT. Tell someone to tell someone to tell someone that Church to God. Hallelujah. Mm, and all my life you have been faithful Oh yes, oh, all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice, you have led me through the fire, in the darkest night, you are close like no other, I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend, oh my even the goodness of God. Let's sing together all my life. All my life you have been faithful. All my life, all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Is running up to me. Your goodness is running up to me. Is running up to me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running up to me. Is running up to me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. You are welcome to Church on the Waves today. Glory to God. Can we talk about thank you for joining us? Who else is in the house? Tell someone to tell someone to tell someone that Church on the Waves is on. Glory to God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. We give you glory, Jesus. We worship and we magnify your name. All our lives you have been faithful. All our lives you have been so, so good. Blessed be your name, Jesus. We worship and we magnify you tonight. We give you the glory and we give you the honor and the praise. Be thou exalted, O God. Be thou glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. Tonight we'll be sharing the goodness of God. Once again, I welcome you to Church on the Waves. It's 6 p.m. West African time and 1700 hours GMT. It's time for Church on the Waves. Start a watch party. Tell someone to tell someone to tell someone that church on the waves is on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What a joy to see today, the day after Easter celebrations. We give you glory, Lord. Thank you for the prize on the cross of Calvary. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the power of resurrection, the power of salvation. We give you all the glory and the praise in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, tonight, because your word says that your word is like fire and like hammer that breaketh the rock to pieces. Thank you, Lord, because your word is coming forth tonight like fire in the name of Jesus and like hammer, destroying every works of the enemy in the lives of everyone that will watch this broadcast in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, it shall come to pass in that day. His burden shall be lifted from off.
yoke from off your neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. I believe God tonight that every yoke of the enemy in every life of every participant in this broadcast shall be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Lord, I release myself to you tonight. I ask that you take over my tongue and my lips, cause me to speak as your echo and to minister with the ability that you give in the name of Jesus Christ. Let utterance be given to me tonight and cause everyone to hear me speak in their own language in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, glorify your name and glorify yourself today. Honor your covenant and remember your word and glorify yourself. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. You are welcome to Church on the Waves today. It's another time of fellowshipping together in God's presence. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I thank God for you, my viewer today. I thank God for your life. I thank God for keeping you alive. I thank God for the grace of God upon your life. We thank God for what is happening all over the world. I want you to know that coronavirus is just a noisome pestilence. And by the grace and the mercies of God, it is driven back in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Because of the beloved, the time of coronavirus is cut short in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Once again, I welcome you to Church on the Waves. Start a watch party, tell someone to tell someone to tell someone that Church on the Waves is on. Glory to God. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We bless God for the Easter celebration. We thank God for the power of resurrection and the power of salvation. I don't know whether you were part of the last broadcast. If you missed it, I would like you to go to my YouTube channel. Very, very powerful. Titled The Power of Salvation. Why pay twice? Go to my YouTube channel, Oluagbe Megadroja channel. You see the video there. I want you also to watch the video Managing Fear managing fear it was a broadcast some weeks ago very awesome very powerful also and then one of the other broadcasts was the power of the communion the power of the communion the communion the power that is in the blood of jesus christ and that is in the flesh of jesus christ go to my youtube channel you will see all these videos there and it will be a blessing to you thank you Akin Kumi for joining us. Thank you, Temitokwe, for joining us. Everyone in the house, you can wave at me. You are welcome to Church on the Waves. Help me invite your friends. Tell them Church on the Waves is on. And I believe God will do you good tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You know, recently I've been pondering upon my life. I've been pondering about my life. I've been thinking and looking back at my life. Like I told you, I said on Church on the Waves, we'll be sharing very, very important things. Very, very important things. Jesus said to Mary, to Martha, Mary has chosen that one thing that is needful. Not many things that you are doing is needful. Only one thing is needful. And Mary has chosen that one thing. And one thing that she has chosen, nobody can take it away from her. So I was looking back at my life recently, and then God laid it upon my heart tonight that we should just share testimonies. All my life, God has been faithful. All my life, God has been so, so good. And that is why I ask friends to send in testimonies. I ask people to send in their testimonies so I could share testimonies together. Testimonies are very, very powerful. Testimonies are very, very powerful. Hallelujah. I look back at my life and I know that I am just simply a product of His grace. Many years ago, one of my prayer sessions with God, I made up my mind and I said, Lord, I made a covenant with God that my life will be summarized by just a sentence. When they ask somebody to say, okay, what can you say about Olu Hagwemiga? What they'll be able to say is that he is simply a product of grace, or he was simply a product of grace. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. I am what I am today by the grace of God. I know that you also are what you are today and who you are today only by the grace of God. The Bible says, not of works, lest any man should boast. It is the gift of God. It is the gift of God. And all we want to do today is to just share those testimonies because they are very, very vital. They are very, very powerful. There's power in testimonies. I want to take my text today again from where we started from at the last broadcast. First John chapter 1, verse 1. First John chapter 1, verse 1. It says, that which was from the beginning. What was from the beginning? 
the things that God did in the past. Hallelujah. Psalm 44 from verse 1 says, We have heard with our ears, O God, our fathers have told us how you drove out the hidden from the land and planted your own people there. It wasn't originally their land, but you chased the people who were occupants of the land and planted your own people there. And he said in verse 3, he said that they got not the land by, by their own sword, neither did their own arm save them. He said, but by your arm, by your right hand, by the light of your countenance, because you were a favor unto them. The Bible says, what have you that you have not received? He said, why then do you behave as if you have not received it? Jesus, uh, John said in John chapter 3, he said, a man can receive nothing except it be given to him from heaven above. Except it be given to him from heaven above. A man can receive nothing. A man can receive nothing. Health, you can receive nothing. You know, a job, you can receive not, not that job, except it be forced released from heaven above. So for me and you today, we are products of his grace. And that is what we want to celebrate today, the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Let's just take that song again as we worship, and then I will come back to you. Let's sing it together. All my life you have been faithful. You have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing. Of the goodness of God. Oh, oh my, oh my life, you have been faithful. Has it been faithful to you all your life? And all my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am in. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Once again, you are welcome. I continue reading from 1 John chapter 1. Hallelujah. We are singing and talking about the goodness of God today because God has been so good. Hallelujah. 1 John chapter 1 verse 1 said, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard. And remember what I told you, what we have heard is what has been done in the past. Psalm 44 verse 1 to 3. How God planted them in that land. The wonders that God had done in the past. So the things that have been from the beginning, which we have had, which we have seen with our own eyes, that is the things that we experienced ourselves, and which we have looked upon, and our hands have undoed of the word of life. Verse 3, that which we have seen and had, declare we unto you, that you also may have fellowship with us. Hallelujah. So we are telling you these things so that you can share fellowship with us. Hallelujah. We are sharing these testimonies today so that you can experience it. In my preparation for this broadcast, the Spirit of God told me, He said, as we share these testimonies today, they will be reproduced in the life of everyone that is a part of this broadcast. And we have testimonies from every area of life. They will be reproduced. Remember the testimony of Jesus. Revelation chapter 19 verse 10. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What is it about testimonies? Testimonies are very, very powerful. Testimonies are one of the weapons of victory. One of the weapons of victory. One of the weapons of victory. When you are faced with any challenge of life, when you are faced with any battle in life, if you can just look back at your life, what God has done for you in the past, or look back at somebody's life, the life of your friend, somebody around you, a testimony shared maybe in church or in your fellowship, if you have ever heard God do something before in the life of then it's a proof that he will do it in your own life also. Remember the Bible says in Revelation chapter 12 verse 7, there was war in heaven. The dragon and his angels fought with Michael and his angels, and the dragon prevailed not. That is the devil. And he was cast down to the earth. And the Bible tells us how they overcame in verse 11 of Revelation chapter 12. The Bible says, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Testimonies are weapons of victory. 
You can use them to defeat the enemy when you are faced with challenges and you are faced with the battles of life. That is what happened to David on that battlefield. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 33, Saul told him, he said, David, you are too young. You are not able to fight this giant. You are not able to fight this giant. He has been a fighter, a champion from the days of his youth. And today, you are just a youth. You are where he started from many years ago. So you are not able to fight him. But David said, your servant might not have fought a giant before. But your servant was keeping his master's father's sheep. And then a bear came and a lion came. And the bear took the sheep. And I ran after the bear. I collected the sheep from his mouth. And then also I went after the lion. And the way David said it was as if the boat came at the same time. Instead of running away, there was a strength given to me, ability given ability given to me, I ran after the lion. Some have said a lion has never seen a human being running after it before. And so it was surprised and stopped to watch the amazement. How can a human being be chasing after me? You know, they say that when a dog bites man, it's not news. But when man bites dog, <laughs> then it's a news. You know, he, he, the, the lion must have wondered that who is this human being chasing after me? And David said, I collected the sheep from his, uh, his mouth, its mouth, I pulled it by the beers, and I smote it, and I killed it. And he said, my God, who gave me the lion and the bear. We also commit this uncircumcised Philistine into my hand. He said this uncircumcised Philistine will be like that lion and that bear. You might not have fought a giant before, but have you fought lions and bears? Do you have testimonies of lions and bears? You can bank on those testimonies. You can rely on those testimonies. They have ability to reproduce themselves. If God has done it for someone before, if God has done it for you before, then he can do it again. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he has done it before, he can do it again. Just cast your mind back to that testimony. There's a testimony I love sharing when I talk about testimonies having the ability to reproduce themselves. I was just a young boy, and my father wanted to sell a car then, and they had put it up with the mechanic. They had displayed it for several weeks. Nobody came to even make an offer to buy the vehicle. Then one day I went to church. It was a Sunday morning. I will never forget. And one man stood up on the on the altar and shared the testimony. He said he wanted to sell his car. The car wasn't moving. Nobody came to buy the car. He said after the service last week Sunday, he went to the bookshop and he bought the sticker of the church. And he placed the sticker of the church on the vehicle and he said, the God of this church, the God of this commission, go to everywhere this week and sell this car for me. He said, by Tuesday, the car was sold. When I heard that testimony and I understood that testimonies have ability to reproduce themselves, nobody needed to tell me. At the end of that service, I went to the bookshop, I bought the same sticker. I got back home and I placed it on the vehicle that my father had wanted to sell for weeks and wasn't moving. I said, car, by the anointing that is upon this commission, the God that did it for that man, sell this car this week. I tell you, before Wednesday, that week, the car was sold. So the next Sunday, I also climbed the altar to share the testimony that I heard somebody sharing testimony last week Sunday about how he sold a car that he had, not, he, had been, he had wanted to sell for a long time and was having difficulty selling it. I shared that testimony. Do you know there was another sister in that service where she had my own testimony also? After the service, she went to buy a sticker, put it on the vehicle she wanted to sell. She came back. Three weeks consecutively in the church, people were sharing testimonies of cars being sold by means of putting or placing the sticker of the church on it. Testimonies have ability to reproduce themselves. They are weapons of victory in the place of battle. That is why David said the God that gave me the lion and the bear. I might not have fought a giant before, but if, if he gave me victory over lion and bear, he will surely give me victory over this one also. So that is the power of testimonies. It's a weapon of victory. They overcame him, Revelation 12, 11, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Another unique thing about testimonies is that you know, the, 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 is, a, is, is, is a prophetic word or is a prophetic declaration. Remember what I said, Revelations 19, 10 says that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. 
Testimonies are signals. Testimonies are pointers to what God is about to do amongst his people. So, for example, you have a group of people who have been believing God maybe to get married or somebody. If one of them should get engaged, it's a signal. It's a breaking point. It's a breakthrough. So if one of them should get engaged and get married eventually, it's a pointer that the God that did it, everybody else should rejoice with that person who gets married and rejoice knowing that if God has done it for this person who was part of us before, that's a pointer that is said to do mine also. That is the power of testimony. It's a prophecy. It's a prophetic word. You can bank on testimony and say, God that did it for this person, do it for me also. Another unique thing about testimonies is that it's a means of encouragement. Testimonies are means of encouragement. Hallelujah. Let me read for you 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4 says, Who comforted us in all our tribulation? So there are times God will allow you to go through tribulations. Rather than avoiding the tribulation, it will make you go through it. It will now comfort you or give you victory in the midst of that battle. He said, who comforted us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He said, so that we are able to comfort others who are in trouble also. God comforts us in the midst of our own tribulations. So the, the challenges that you go through at times, God uses them and gives you victory over them so that you can use it to encourage some. So God encourages us in the midst of our tribulations. The comfort where we can comfort others also. Also, hallelujah, glory to God. So God comforts you, gives you comfort in the midst of your tribulation. God gives you a testimony so that you can use the same testimony to encourage others also. I tell people this is one of the major reasons of having church. Remember, I got my own testimony of my father being able to sell his car when I had somebody else's testimony. So when testimonies, tribulations come like that, God uses it and gives us victory over them so that we can use it to encourage others also. And that is what we just want to do tonight. Hallelujah. I want to share with you the testimony of my salvation. You know, I was growing up as a young boy, growing up as a good boy. You know, I was a good boy as it were. And my father loved me because he believed I always told, told the truth and all of that. And then there was a day I spoiled someone's um, property. And then the person threatened to beat me if I don't replace it. And I didn't have money as a young boy. I didn't have money as it were to, to replace it. So for the first time, I had to steal. And so that was the beginning of my stealing. You know, I started stealing. That day, my father didn't believe I was the one. You know, he had always trusted me. He was so disappointed when he found out eventually because against all odds, because God loved me, he found out that I was the one that stole the money eventually. And when he was beating me, he was shedding tears. Because this is a boy that he had always looked up to, that, you know, this boy is my pride, is my joy, and all of that. And so that's how I started stealing and doing many other bad things that I was doing. Until that day, 21st of July, 1989, I went for a music concert. I will never forget. And then at the end of the concert, altar call was made and I found myself in front. There have been challenges since then. There are times I had to rededicate my life to Christ, but that was the turning point. When I, on my way back home that day, there was a joy in my heart. It's called the joy of salvation. I was so excited. I was so happy. I was so joyful as I ran back home that day that I've given my life to Christ. Praise the Lord. That is the joy of salvation. That is the joy of salvation. And me, or myself that used to steal before, I that used to steal before, today, by the grace of God, by the mercies of God, I've been able to overcome that. I've been able to overcome that. That is the testimony of my salvation. Another striking testimony is the testimony of my birth. Like I said, when I look back, my life is full of the goodness of God. My life is full of the mercies of God. I'm simply a product of his grace. When my mom got pregnant with my pregnancy, you know, she was surprised. 
because she had made up her mind along with my dad that they were not having any other child again. So they had had two boys and two girls, so they were satisfied. They had concluded, and they, she went to So when she got pregnant, she was shocked. She was surprised that she got pregnant. And then, you know, she went to the doctor, and the doctor said, well, you are pregnant, and all of that. And then in the course of the pregnancy, God spoke to my father. And he said, I know you don't want a child anymore. He said, but I'm sending this one to be a blessing to your family, to be a blessing to your household. And then when my mom was about seven months pregnant, also God spoke to her that this boy is for signs, and for, this child that is coming is for signs and for wonders. My father told me this story when I concluded my OND program and I took my project, the book of my project to him. It was a 100 amps um, public address system amplifier that we built in OND. I did OND in electrical engineering. And then I took it to him and he saw the name I wrote in front of the book. He said, I'm glad that you wrote this name in full. And then he told me this story that I'm telling you today. And so, to the glory of God, I have very brilliant and very great siblings. Lawyers, bankers, insurers, computer engineers, very big and great siblings. But when it got to my WAEC, you know, just a year before then, the church where my parents were attending just started doing awards for children after their work, that's their final exams after secondary school, completing the secondary school. And so they started the year before us. And so at my work, I had nine A's, nine distinction. And so for that year, I was number one. When they called out the names of those that did very well in their work, they called me out and then others that joined with me. That day, my father sent a testimony to the church. And he made a statement. He said, the child that I taught was a failure of contraceptive. The child that I taught was a biological accident. Today has become the biggest pride and testimony of the family. That's another unique testimony. So I know I'm a child of destiny. I know that, you know, against all odds, I came, as it were. Against all odds, I came. And that is why I know that I'm a product of his grace. I'm a product of his grace. If my parents have gone ahead to cancel that pregnancy, I won't be here today. I won't be here today. But God said he must come. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, I want to share with you another testimony concerning accommodation. I could remember maybe somebody is facing an accommodation challenge today. I want you to realize that God can make a way for you. I could realize when I wanted to get married, about three weeks to our wedding day, the third week, that is on a Saturday, there was still no accommodation yet. And I began to tell myself, where are you going to live with your new wife? You know, I was still wondering and puzzling. Maybe I will stay with my older brother. I was just thinking, I don't know what's going to happen. I could remember that Saturday, I went three weeks, exactly three weeks to our wedding. I went with my wife to be, we went, you know, house searching. We went everywhere, you know, it's either the kitchen is so small, the bedrooms are so tiny, you know, the floors are all manner of places that we were seeing. And so I got back to, I could remember I got back to Oshodi that Saturday evening, and I sat down dejected in the public transport, in the bus, you know, I sat down dejected, that was around probably 9 p.m. or so, all through the day we've been walking up and down, yet no accommodation, nothing. It was as it were, not that we, we had the money in our pocket, but at least let's find the place that we love. And then as I sat down there, dejected, I got a text message from someone. He said, I noticed my neighbor was parking out today. Are you still interested in accommodation? If you are, call this number. Right there in the bus, as I was going home, dejected, I tired, worn out. I called, made the call, and the person said, I should see him on Monday, the next, the following week. I, want, I went there. I'd always known that the accommodation I would stay in, when I get there, I will know, I will know it. I will be able to identify it. And we got there. It was a perfect fit of what we had always wanted. The kitchen was very roomy. You know, the sitting room, very roomy, very airy. You know, everything was perfect. Two bedrooms, you know, you know, in suits. All the rooms were in suits. Everything fitted what we just wanted. 
you know. And then the person told me, spoke with the landlord, and the landlord said, oh, you have to pay two years up front, blah, blah, blah. Everything was totally not above, well, about 700,000, about 750 something thousand plus naira. And then I said, where am I going to find it? And then I just made a call to someone. And I said, I found a place, and they told me I should bring 750,000 plus. He said, do you like it? I said, yes, I like it, but it's three weeks to my wedding. Where will I find 750000 I said, other things you want to pay for? And he said, I said, do you like it? I said, I like it, yes. He said, come and collect the money and pay me back whenever you have the money. Three weeks to my wedding. That is how God made a way for us. God has always showed up for me. I shared the testimony of my job with you. You know, sitting down for the job interview. I had not read anything. I had not read much. And then somebody was there. Go and watch that video, Managing Fear. Somebody else was there, was talking about all the previous interviews he had been, the questions they asked them. And I asked myself, I couldn't answer any of these questions. So I moved away from him. And then shortly, a senior colleague walked in, who also came for the interview. And we sat down together and I asked her, what are you reading for this interview after exchanging pleasantries? And she said, this is the book. It was just about a 10-page book. She said, this is the book I was reading yesterday before I slept off. Can we revise it together? And we're looking at it together. We got to page four. And then they came in and I said, take away all books. It's time for the interview. I tell you the truth. Every question, just, just one sentence question. Family medicine, concept, content, context, discourse. And everything, the concept of family medicine, the context of family medicine, the content of family medicine was in the first three pages of that book. That is how I emerged with the highest score in that interview. I scored 36 over 40. About 50 of us sat down for the written interview. About only eight people were invited for the orals. And my name was number one. My name was number one. Am I not brilliant? That is why I tell you today that everything I've obtained has been by the grace and the mercy of God. I pray for someone who is in need of accommodation today. I pray that God will make a way for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He said he drove out the hidden and planted his own people. They got not the land by their own sword. Neither did their own hand save them. But by your right hand, by the hand of your light, light of your countenance, because you were a favor unto them. I pray for you by divine favor, receive the accommodation in the mighty name of Jesus. Protocol will be broken for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray for someone who is looking up to God for a job. When I got that job, finally, you know, my head of department came to meet me and he said, Dr. Drew Jai, you were so awesome in that interview. Your other colleagues didn't know what we were talking about. Only you understood what we were talking about. And I smiled. I said, sir, it's a product of grace. If I told you that it was what I just read before they distributed the question papers, that is why I was able to answer it. Nobody could have been prepared for that kind of question but by the favor of God. I pray for someone today, by divine favor and divine positioning, receive your miracle job in the name of Jesus Christ. When men are saying there's a casting down, by the mercies and the favor of God, you shall say there's a lifting up in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So it's the things that I've seen, the things I've looked upon, the things that my hands have handled, those are the things I've come to share with you tonight. That there is a God that does signs and wonders. There is a God that does miracles. If he has done it for me before, he can do it for you. One of the most famous testimonies of my life is the testimony of my university admission. Maybe there's someone out there who is seeking university admission. You've been writing jam a number of times, or you've been writing a particular professional exam a number of times, and then you've been having challenges with it. I wrote jam for the second time and I made up my mind that was the final time I was going to write it. Continue with So I sat down for jam that year and for the first time I couldn't finish. I still had about 15 questions unanswered in the last portion, which was physics. And I still left other questions unanswered in chemistry and biology, but they took everything from my hand. And I said, Benga, this is your last jam. You are not writing any jam again. And now you have not finished. The jam I wrote previously, I finished. I was the one that willingly went to submit. And I know what I scored. I scored 208. So I told myself, if you finish everything, I scored 208. This one that you didn't finish, you have about 30 questions unanswered. What will you score? 
So rather than going home that day from the jam center, thank God for knowing Jesus at a young age. As a teenager, I left the jam exam center and I went straight to church. I knew my pastor would not be in church. He doesn't even know me. As I then, we didn't have any personal relationship. He didn't know me. But I went to the back of his office and I prayed one prayer. It was an heartfelt prayer. I said, God, this my pastor told me that you have a pen. Because it was with it that you wrote the Ten Commandments. And when you wrote it, it was legible. Moses could read it and all the children of Israel could read it. Lord, my pastor told me that you have a pen. Now, I don't know what you are going to do. Whether you are going to go now before they mark the papers and fill up all the spaces I left on. Or after they finish it and they to add to it with your pen. Lord, I don't know how you are going to do it, but I'm not going to fail this exam and I'm not writing jam again. It was after I prayed that heartfelt prayer that I got, went back home. When my father asked me, how was the exam? I didn't tell him stories. I just said it was fine. And this is something I need to tell someone out there. I used to tell my friends when we were, when we were undergraduates. Never say that you didn't finish any exam. Even when you are writing professional exams, never say that I didn't finish. Because if you say you didn't finish, you have sealed it. When they ask you how was the exam, just say it was fine. You give God room to go and intervene. But when you say I didn't finish, that means you have sealed it, that you truly did not finish. And what the examiners will mark is what you didn't finish. But when you say it was fine, then you give God room. God has a pen. I don't know what God did, whether he went to feel the ones I didn't feel, or he went after they had finished marking it like I prayed. I gave him two options, but I told him, God, I'm not failing this exam, and I'm not writing this exam again. But do you know I scored higher than the first jam? I scored higher than the first jam. The one that I finished everything, filled everywhere, went to submit willingly. I scored less than the one where the draft had to collect the answer sheets forcefully from my hands because of time. Because of time. So I've seen the hand of God. That is just testimony one. The other testimonies that followed, when the results came out and admission list came out, with that same score, I was still 30 marks away from the cutoff to study medicine. So it looked like all hope was lost. So I went to College of Medicine in UCH. The woman looked through the list. I will never forget that day. She looked through the list and said, what did you say your name is? And I told her, and she said, sorry, boy, you are not one of our candidates. We have chosen our candidate, and you are, your name is not there. I said to myself, I said it back. That's why I said in 1 Samuel 17, never allow the enemy to have the final say. I said, I said, my name is there. I said, Ma, can I look at the list? The woman looked at me like this. Which teenager is this? I told you your name is not there. What did you, did you not say your name is Benga Droja? I have checked through the list. Your name is not there. Go and prepare for the next jam. When I came out of the building, I looked up into the sky. I said, I'm 30 marks away from cutoff to study medicine. I said, that is very easy. I said, God the Father, you donate 10 marks. God the Son, you contribute 10 marks. God the Holy Spirit, you add 10 marks. By the time I had it, that's 30 marks to my deficiency. Then I'll meet up with the cutoff to study medicine. That same evening, I go to church. Young boy, teenager, male teenager. I go to church and my pastor was rounding up. As I then, I had no personal relationship with him. He never knew me. The pastor was rounding up the service and he said, get up, let me pray for you, let me bless you as you go. And then he started praying. Then he, he stopped and he said, there's a woman here believing God for the fruit of the womb. God asked me to tell you that you are now pregnant. When my pastor made that statement, I said within my heart, I said, God, ah, if only this man can just mention my name. Before I finished saying it in my mouth, he just paused and he said, there's a student here. They told you that the list has been concluded. God asked me to tell you that that list cannot be concluded until your name is included. For the first time in my life, God singled me out of a crowd and singled me out with a prophetic word. I was just told that the list has been concluded, but God said that list cannot be concluded until your name is included. Men and brethren, I gave nobody any bribe. I saw no man after the flesh. I did nothing. 
But do you know that when the admission list, the final list came out, supplementary list for admission to study University of Ibadan, Nigeria's premier university, my name was there. It was when I was doing my registration that I saw people who scored 10, 20 marks higher than me. Somebody scored just a mark less than the cutoff mark. She was giving medicine. She was giving nursing. Somebody else was giving biochemistry. But I was giving medicine despite being 30 marks away. So these are the things that I've seen. These are the things that my hands have handled. And I'm sharing this with you today so that you can be partaker of the same thing. I pray for someone under the sound of my voice that is believing God for admission. I don't care how much or how often, you, how many times you have written that professional exam. By decree, by the mercies and the grace of God, and by the partition of this testimony tonight, I declare that the last time you have written that exam will be the last forever. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you will never need to repeat that exam again. You will never need to repeat that exam again. You are excelling. You are standing out. You are succeeding. In the mighty name of Jesus. The favor of God will speak for you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. What if God has done it for one before? Then he can do it for you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, we give you glory and we give you praise. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. There are many other testimonies. Time will not permit me to share with you today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I've seen testimonies of divine healings. Testimonies of divine healings. I could remember when I was in one, I was caught. Muslim was caught in with me. I won't mention this. You know how far this video will go. But he was ill for about two to three days. He couldn't attend lectures. He could not attend lectures. At some point, his Muslim brethren came around and, you know, they read the Quran over him. They prayed for him. This guy did not get well. At the end of the third day, I walked up to him. I said, do you mind if I pray for you? He said, I don't mind. And that night I could remember I invoked the mercies of God. I said, Lord Jesus, you died for all mankind. Your blood was shed for the deliverance of all mankind, irrespective of their religion. I said, Lord, by your mercy, lay your hand. And I mentioned his name. And I, as I was praying, the Spirit of God told me, make a declaration. And I made a declaration. I said, in the next 30 minutes. This is somebody who has not attended lectures for three days. He has not even got up to have his, have his bath. Sick. He couldn't go to any hospital or go to anywhere. So he was just there, lying down, maybe sipping water. That's all he could take. I lay my hands on him and I prayed. And I said, in the next 30 minutes, you are up on your feet, going all about, well, fully restored. I tell you, within 30 minutes, he was up, walking around, ironing his clothes. God healed him. I could remember another senior colleague that was challenged with cancer. You know, he just fell ill and started losing weight. Some people will remember this testimony. And then, you know, a very senior colleague, they took him to the theater. When they opened up, they couldn't find anything. Or it was something they couldn't, you know, treat. They just closed back. As it were, he was left for dead. Then God laid it upon my heart that start prayer. It led me to Acts chapter 12. And I called some people together. I said, James was beheaded and he pleased the Jews. When the error saw that he pleased the Jews, then he took Peter also. I, des I said, this is Peter and Peter must not die. I looked at all of us who were seven in the room. And I said, I'm giving everybody a challenge today. Pick a day that you will fast and pray for this man. And so we took it up as a challenge. My own day was Tuesdays. Every Tuesday, <laughs> hallelujah. And then we started fasting and praying for this man. This is a man, as it were, that has been left for dead. They've gone in. They couldn't find anything. They couldn't do anything. And they closed up. So it was, as it were, left for dead. And then we began to pray. We began to pray. I could remember one of those days when I went to visit him. He could not even talk anymore. The sign he made with his eyes when he looked at me was as if the message I got was, being I'm dying. I was going to, are you going to watch me going like this? And so we started praying. The Bible says, but prayer 
was being made for Peter by the church. And so we instituted prayer, intercession, intercession for this man. Every Sunday after service, I will go to his, his, his room in UCH. Then I will pray with him. I will pray with him. He couldn't talk anymore. We were just playing messages on laptop, you know, beside him. I will pray with him. And then one Sunday, I got there to visit him and they said he has been discharged. I said, what? They said he has been discharged. Few weeks after, he was back in church and he sang a song I will never forget. Olore me. You know, he was in tears when he was sharing his testimonies. He was left for dead, but God rescued him. And the God that healed him, I'm talking about probably like roughly like 15, 14 years ago. The man is still alive and well today, going all over the world. He's a very senior colleague now in the world of medicine. He's doing so well all over the world, especially in Africa. You know, he has won so many awards and he's doing so much. This is somebody that would have died 14, 15 years ago. But prayer, I've seen the hand of God. So what testimony do you desire in your life? Look around you. Has God done it for someone before? If he has done it for someone before, then he can do it for you. Hallelujah. I round up with that as we begin to pray. He said, God will see us through our tribulation. So that when we are comforted in the midst of our tribulation, we can use the same comfort to comfort others also. I've shared with you today testimonies. If I tell you testimony of my wedding, of my marriage, or getting a life partner, you know, it was God that brought her my way. That month, God gave me a word. Why is it that you have found it so quickly, my son? He said, because the Lord your God brought it to me. Genesis 27, verse 20. And I prayed with that message. I even used it to encourage others. I never knew the word was for me. And that was the same month I met my wife. We had been classmates in school, but nothing ever happened between us. But God brought her to me. I got her quickly because God brought her to me. So there's someone out there who is believing God for a life partner who is believing God for marriage this year. The same God that brought my spouse to me will bring him or her to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The God that healed those people, if there be anyone who is out sick right there, you've just had the testimony of somebody's supernatural healing and deliverance. Even in the highest places of medicine in Nigeria, they could do nothing for him, but God delivered him. I don't know what your diagnosis is. I don't know what the condition is that you are dealing with or you are living with, but I stretch forth my hands towards you by faith tonight. And I say, receive healing in your body. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I command be made whole from that infirmity. In the name of Jesus Christ, glory to God. Hallelujah. Remember testimonies are a proof that if God has done it for someone before, then he can do it for you. Remember the story of David. Remember that testimonies are also weapons of victory. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Remember also that testimonies are prophecies. They are signals. If God has done it for someone who was in your group, then it means that God is about to do yours also. The testimony of Jesus, Revelation 19 verse 10, is the spirit of prophecy. And then testimonies are for encouragement. I hope somebody has been encouraged by the testimonies I've shared tonight. I would like you to share your own testimonies also with me. I love testimonies because like I said, you can feed on them to feed your faith, to feed your hope, and to know that if God has done it before, either in my life or in the life of someone, then he can do it again. Even this coronavirus, God has dealt with plagues before in the past. God has dealt with Ebola before. The God that delivered this nation and the nations of the world from all these pestilences and all these plagues will deliver the world from coronavirus in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want you to stretch out your hands and just say a word of prayer as we round up today and just say, God, is there any testimony you've had tonight or you know in the life of someone around you and you want God to do the same in your own life also? I want you to talk to God in prayer tonight and just say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I know you did it for this person. Lord, you can do it for me too. Is it testimony of admission? Is it testimony of success in exams? Is it testimony of 
of success in job interviews? Is it testimony of accommodation? Is it testimony of marriage? Is it testimony of childbirth? Is it testimony of breakthrough? Is it testimony of salvation? Talk to God in prayer right now and say, Father Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, if you have done it before, you can do it for me. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, you did it for my brother. You did it for my sister. Do it for me. In the name of Jesus, let there be a reproduction of testimonies in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Father, I join my faith with everyone watching this broadcast right now and everyone under the sound of my voice and everyone that will watch this broadcast whatever your need may be and whatever your heart desires may be if God has done it before there's nothing you need now that God has not done for someone before so I join my faith with yours tonight for he said in his word that whoever two or three shall agree concerning anything it shall be done I agree with you that that which you have requested tonight that thing you are looking up to God for to do for you that testimony you are expecting from God. I join my faith with yours and I say receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord shall do exceedingly abundantly above your heart desire and what you have asked tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. God will embarrass you surprise you in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive your testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I would like you to share your testimony with me. You can send it to the script ministry at gmail.com. T-H-E script ministry, S-C-R-I-P-T ministry at gmail.com or you can send it to me on WhatsApp plus 2348033714164 plus 2348033714164 Three three seven one four one six four. Hallelujah. Go to my YouTube channel. You see all the previous broadcasts there, even including that of the patterns. We've been having wonderful times on Fridays on the patterns. Short, sharp, and punchy. That's what the patterns is all about. Go to my YouTube channel. Uluag Bimega Doja is the YouTube channel. Like those videos. Watch them. Share them. And subscribe so that you keep getting notifications whenever another video is uploaded. Hallelujah. Once again, remember, share your testimonies with us. I look forward to receiving your testimonies. You can also follow us on our Facebook page at the script ministry the the script ministry is our facebook page on instagram we are at the script ministry letter d capital letter d then script ministry on instagram and the same address on twitter our twitter handle is at the script ministry hallelujah glory to god is there someone that has had these testimonies tonight and wants god to reproduce the same in his life and you don't know jesus yet as your lord and savior I want to pray with you tonight. Remember the first testimony I shared was the testimony of my salvation. That was the beginning of the miracles in my life. Everything I've ever gotten in life, I've never deserved them. I've gotten them on the platform of grace and favor. And I believe favor is better than labor. I'm a product of grace. I believe so much in the grace of God. I don't dwell much on labor. I dwell much more on favor. I will do my own part. I'll be diligent, but I always rest on his favor upon my efforts. Because the Bible says it's not of him that will it, nor of him that run that showeth mercy. It's not of him that planted, nor of him that watered, but God will give so somebody might be out there, you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, you don't have him as your personal Lord and Savior. When you have him a personal relationship with him, you'll be a miracle worker. Instead of chasing after miracles, you will be a living miracle. I want you to say this prayer after me. If you want to give your life to Christ tonight, just say, Lord Jesus, I have had testimonies of your marvelous works tonight. And I want you to do marvelous things in my life also. I am sorry for all my sins. I repent of them. I ask that you forgive me and wash me clean with your precious blood. From tonight, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray grace will keep you. The greatest miracle you can have is the miracle of salvation. 
that's the greatest miracle greatest testimony you can ever have if you watch my video on the video of the last broadcast why pay twice uh, that was the secret that i shared with you that that is the beginning of miracles having a personal relationship with jesus christ it gives your life a 360 degrees turn around it rewrites your story and rewrites your destiny congratulations share your salvation testimony with me on all those platforms i await your testimonies in the mighty name of jesus just today thank you diana for joining us thank you damilola for joining us thank you mrs azuka for joining us thank you temi Tokwe for joining us thank you adebisi for joining us thank you for akikumi for joining us everyone who joined tonight please share this video it will be a blessing to someone it is a testimony of the goodness of god hallelujah glory to god i look forward to you sharing your in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Till I come your way again, I want to sign out with this song again. Hallelujah. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. Let's sing it together because I know in your life too, God has been faithful and God has been so good. Hallelujah. Love you, Lord, for your mercies never fail me. Mercies never fails me. And all my days, all my days, I've been lived in your hands, held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. Can we sing together? All my life you have been faithful. Yes, Lord, when we look back at all our lives, we see your hand in every area of our lives, Lord. You've been so good to us. With every breath that we are able, we will sing of the goodness of God. God bless you till I come your way again at the next broadcast of Church on the Waves. Remain blessed and continue to swim in testimonies in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me to 